Um, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, so, 20 years ago, I traveled to Pakistan. Actually, I traveled back to Karachi with my parents. My father, who'd done his fellowship from the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons in Scotland, wanted to go back home and serve his country. So, naturally, I had to travel with him. And I was taken, essentially, from one education system and put into another. The dilemma was that I couldn't cope. And the irony was that I was termed as a special needs child. Now today, I'd be sharing with you some stories from my life that I experienced that ch changed me into the person that I am today. Now, I'll be sharing with you three stories that led me to, um, to, to figure out who I truly am. Now the first question that I, that I want to ask you, how many of you have ever failed in life? Can you raise your hands? How many of you have ever recorded such events? Um, not many. How many of you have actually learned anything from those events? My guess is not many. Now, <laughs> well, uh, for, uh, for me as an individual, I've failed many times. One, when I went to get admission in schools, when I went back to Pakistan. Second, in college, in my board examinations. And third, in my MBA, when I got, got a low score. Yet still, I'm standing here in front of you today, giving a TED talk. Can it get better than this? <laughs> so, I, I don't think it can. Now, what is it that one thing that, uh, that you know, led me or changed me? Well, it all started with the psychology class. Now, clearly, when I went back to Pakistan, um, I got to know that the education system had failed me, and I was failing at every step. So naturally, the next thing that I wanted to do was enroll myself into an education program, in, into a teacher education program, to understand whether it was the fault of the teachers that couldn't teach me, or was it the fault of myself that I couldn't learn. And I enrolled into an education program that was administered by uh, an Australian management. Now I still remember the first class of psychology. Our teacher, Anne, came running into the class, the first class, and she bought with her a treasure box. In the treasure box, was, she said, was something really unique. Now, me being a curious individual, I wanted to see what was inside this box. And, but, but uh, you know, I, I jumped out of my chair, but she said, Nadim, wait, hold on, and uh, I want you to sit down, and I want each student to come one by one and to see what's inside this box. So she, she opened up the box, and she put it on the side. Can anyone guess what was inside the box? Uh, some people say it might be gold, it might be silver. It might be some sort of you know, stone that was really precious. But it, inside, when, we, when, when I went there, when I looked inside, there was a mirror. It was an image. It was showing the image of myself. That was no ordinary mirror. It was showing the image of myself. Now, my second question here. How many of you guys go to the gym? How many of you guys track record of your progress? How many of you guys actually track record, put it down on a piece of paper? Not many. Now, the, the reason why I'm asking you is tracking not on the mobile phones, but on a piece of paper. Now, I've seen whenever I open up my cell phone, I usually go into a social media app and use a, and see the development of other people rather than seeing my own development. That's why I'm saying that put it on a piece of paper. Now, coming back and reflecting on my MBA class, when I used to, when I used to teach people at, at uh, uh, when I used to lecture at university, I had the opportunity to meet CEOs and ask them curious questions about what, was, what is it that leads to their success? What is that one factor? Now, CEOs came up with different answers. They said persistency, uh, diligence, teamwork, leadership, collaboration. There are many things that they said. But right now, I'm 100% sure that not any of these things can help you, or neither that, that they can help me to succeed as far as they've went. Why? Because it's one thing that we're missing. They didn't, they didn't want to run after success. They ran after excellence. Now, what is it that one thing that took them towards this excellence 
was it, what, what kind of thing was it? Was it a device? Was it some sort of thing that they do? Was it yoga? What was this? Now, I asked this, I, I observed, and this one thing was actually uh, just a diary. Now, I have myself bought one, just to show you. Now, what was inside this diary was something that was uh, important. Inside this diary was their reflection. Reflections. Now, what do we mean by reflection? When, when we think about reflection, we imagine a mirror, a mirror image of ourselves. Now, this mirror image sees us as, as a physical nature of ourselves. But reflection it goes deeper. Reflection goes deeper into the soul. It looks into yourself. And it, it basically, when you reflect, you match your soul to the world. That's, that's what reflection is, uh, is there for. Uh, one of the professors here, uh, who's known as Michael Reynolds, he tells us reflection is basically um, is, is a process in which you think about your ongoing processes, uh, you think about your ongoing processes, and you think about and you relate them to your future. That's what reflection relates uh, relates to. Now, when when we talk about reflection, what else comes to our mind is how we link that reflection to our future. Now, something. Now, the other thing that I wanted to share was. So our bodies are like memory pads. Anything we do, anything we experience in our bodies, basically, whether, whether it's conscious or unconscious, they become part and they become stored in our body. Our mind, basically, when we reflect, our, our mind takes this short-term memory, uh, takes the reflection or takes this uh, knowledge that we have gained, tacit knowledge, it takes it and takes it from our short-term memory to our long-term memory. So at Lancaster University, this is the third and last story, at Lancaster University, I've been fortunate to work with people throughout the globe. And um, I've, what, what the program has offered to us is to, for individuals, for us to be able to reflect throughout the program. Now, any activity that happens within a, within, within an, uh, within a group usually leads towards conflicts. How many people have had conflicts while working in a group? So usually these conflicts can be seen, any, any event, uh, when it's seen reflectively, is like an onion. So there are many layers to an onion. The first layer could be as you've seen it, right? So my perception of what that, uh, uh, you know, my perception of what that thing would be or what that event entails. The second is how that, that's been perceived by my team members. And the third are what, what are the factors that lead for that event to take place. So reflection basically helps us un uncover all of these factors and gradually e enables us to become a better individual uh, over time. Now, today, reflection highlight is highlighted as a key element in major uh, programs such as learning activities, group conferences, and uh, outdoor major programs, and action learning. Now, my idea for today is for us to start using such approaches to link uh, with our actions and experiences, rather than just uh, taking them, uh, taking the theory and ideas, and using them in uh, in uh, unforeseen experiences. Uh, so, in practice, when we talk about reflection, what do we talk about? We it, whether we're uh, uh, reflecting in teams, whether we're re reflecting individually, we need to make sense of our social and political environment, and we need to. Uh, you know, gear ourselves towards the wider community. So in time, we'll be able to open up possibilities of a, a purposeful learning experience that, are, that, are, that comes not from just books and uh, from experts, but comes from our own work and our own lives. I'd like to end my, uh, end my talk with uh, a quote from Michael Cohen. Every day offers you an opportunity to grow, to become more whole to move closer to the ultimate you, the best version of you, the one who flies and soars, the happier you. You are stronger than your moods or emotions because you are a human being. You're curious, conscious, beautiful, resilient, and brilliant. You are made to grow. 
add a feather to your wing every day and soar.